everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to talk about the reactive design of our loading service and we're going to start its implementation. So what we want to do with this shared service which is getting injected here in the home component also on the course dialog and anywhere else in our application where we need to show a loading indicator we want to provide via this service a convenient way for different parts of the application to trigger the display of the loading indicator without any of the multiple parts of the application such as the home component etc to be directly aware of the existence of the loading component so the loading component it's this simple component that we have defined here with the material spinner that we are injecting in our application in only one place for the moment we are injecting it here at the level of our application root component just above our main router outlet now the loading service is also getting injected here in our loading component. So this is how our loading component is going to interact with the rest of the application via the loading service. Let's now define then the public API of the loading service. The most important part of this public API is going to be one observable that we're going to be calling the loading observable. This observable is going to be of type observable of boolean. So this means that the values emitted by this observable are either true or false. This observable is going to emit true whenever we want to show the loading indicator to the user and it's going to emit false if we want to hide the loading indicator from the user. Let's now see how the loading component is going to consume this observable. Going back here to our loading component, we are going to be making this loading service not a private property, but we are going to make it public so that it's accessible also by the template of the component. And here in our component template, we are going to consume the loading observable using the async pipe and we want to show to the user the whole loading component if the observable emits true. Let's then apply here the ng-if angular directive, let's access the loading service and let's access the loading observable. We're going to be applying here just like before the angular async pipe that is going to take care of subscribing to the loading observable and it's going to be in charge of passing the emitted values by the loading observable to the template. So this expression here is going to be evaluated to true whenever the loading observable emits a true value. And it's going to be evaluated to false whenever the loading observable emits a false value. Depending on if the value of this expression is true or false, then the material loading indicator with its gray background is going to be shown to the user or not. Now let's talk about the advantages of this simple design. So by using an observable and consuming it here in our template, this means that the loading component is completely unaware of how the rest of the Angular application is structured. And namely the loading component is not aware of the home component and it's not aware of the edit course component or of any other component of the application that needs to show a loading indicator. The loading component simply knows about the loading observable of the shared loading service and that's its only means of interaction with the rest of the application. Now the rest of the application besides the loading indicator can also consume here the public loading observable in order to get an indication if the application is loading something from the backend or not but more often what the rest of the application wants to do is to simply turn on or off the loading indicator so here at our loading service we're going to be adding to its public api a couple of methods we're going to call it loading on and loading off and this is going to enable us to turn on and off the loading indicator at any moment from anywhere in our application. Although it's convenient to have these two methods available here in case that we want to explicitly turn on or off the loading indicator by any reason, more often than not, what we want to do is to turn on and off the loading indicator in our application 
in a way that is linked to the life cycle of a given observable. For example, we want to be able to turn on the loading indicator whenever we create a load courses observable and we want to turn it off when the observable either completes or errors out. So in order to make it simple for components such as the home component to turn on and off the loading indicator, depending on the life cycle of a given observable, we are going to be adding here a new method that we're going to be calling show loader until completed. This is going to take as input argument an observable, which is the observable that we want to track the life cycle in order to decide if the load indicator should be used or not. And we are going to be returning as the output of this method another observable of the same type. And that observable that we are returning here is going to have loading indicator capabilities. So this new observable is going to be able to turn off and on the loading indicator at the appropriate moments. Now, this method should be compatible for observables of any type. So let's make this a generic type by adding here a generic type argument to our function. So with this, we will be able to have type safe code with any type of observable. Let's for the moment, in order to fix this compilation error, just return here undefined as a default implementation of this method. We are going to see exactly how we are going to be implementing this method later on in this course. Right now, in the next lesson, we are going to talk about how to implement the loading on and off method and also how are we going to create the loading observable that we see here. So as you can see, so far we have just defined the loading observable, but we have not yet assigned it any value. Let's then learn how we are going to implement the loading observable, which is the most important part of our reactive design.